Welcome to Manhattan Athletic Club Yoga. I'm Phil. So today I'll be leading you through a gentle flow, not too gentle, but we'll hold poses longer than sort of normal. Uh, if you have props, if you have blocks, great. Two blocks parked up at the front corners of the mat. It's nice to have a blanket or a towel just to pad the knees when we work on the knees and maybe the place under the back of the head. And I'll be offering modifications throughout the practice. So if you have any injuries, really listen to the injury, really honor the body. Something doesn't feel right in the low back and the knees come out of the pose, rearrange. Um, yeah, just be mindful, in tune with your own body. So we'll start the practice today seated. So just come into a nice, comfortable seated position. A couple options, you can sit cross-legged, if you'd like to sit on your shins with the sit bones resting, resting on the heels, then that's fine in hero pose. If you're sitting with the legs crossed, maybe an option to place the block underneath the sitting bones. It just starts to bring the pelvis to a nice neutral position. If you don't have any blocks, you can sit up on a book, you can sit up on a folded blanket or a firm cushion. You just want to work to find a nice neutral position for the spine. And then once you've gathered your props and made your way into this seated position, just let the palms rest on the knees and let the sitting bones start to root into whatever happens to be supporting them. And then just see if you can allow the crown of your head just to float a little more towards your ceiling, just finding length in the spine. So we just want to avoid kind of rounding forward. And just see if the shoulders can drop ever so slightly away from the ears but without forcing them. Just allow those knees to support the palms so the arms can continue just to be soft, thus resulting in soft shoulders. And if you're comfortable closing the eyes for the first part of the practice while we just stay seated, then please do so. If you don't feel comfortable closing the eyes all the way, then just have the gaze soft to a single point just on the mat or the floor in front of you. And with the eyes closed or working with that soft gaze, just allow the awareness to start to turn inwards. Just start to let go of whatever may have occurred leading up to you coming to your mat today. And see if you can let go with, of whatever might be lined up for the rest of your day, the rest of the evening. Just start to pull the awareness into the present moment. Relax the jaw, let the lips part ever so slightly, and allow the tongue just to soften to the lower half of the mouth. Just see if you can relax the muscles in the forehead, the brow, the cheeks, the area around the ears, the area around the mouth, the chin, see if the throat can even start to soften. And then soften through the back of the neck. And then just bring awareness to your breath here. See if you can just avoid changing any component of the breath. Just allow yourself to become the observer here. Just watch the body breathe the breath at whatever tempo the breath happens to be breathing at this exact moment. So we just want to avoid any temptation to want to control, manipulate, alter any component of the inhale or the exhale. Just allow the breath to be breathed. We'll start the practice with a pranayama practice, a breath work. So just place your right palm underneath the left armpit, cross your left forearm over the right, the left palm goes under the right armpit. This pranayama is called padadirsasana, it just works to balance the body here. So have the thumbs pointing towards your ceiling, have your palms and fingers just lightly cupping the upper outer ribs here. And if you next have an inhale, just allow the ribs to expand into the palm. 
palms. And as you exhale, just let those palms monitor the motion of the ribs as they pull back in towards the spine. So with the inhale, we inflate the lungs, expanding the rib cage outward, upward. And as we exhale, as the lungs deflate, the ribs pull back in towards the spine, just the natural mechanics of the body. We're just allowing those palms to ride the ebb and flow of each breath here. Just working to balance the left to the right side body here. the next full round, when you next happen to exhale, just slide those palms out from underneath the armpits. Bring those fingertips to rest either side of the legs. Just keep it that nice tall seat here. On the inhale, take the arms overhead, join the palms, clasp the fingers, roll the wrist, shine the palms towards the ceiling, taking the knuckles away from the crown of the head. If this already feels too intense in the shoulders, bend the elbows out to the side, soften the shoulders. We're just working to create space in the side body. Take an inhale into the space you've created. As you exhale, unclasp your hands, take a twist to your right, bring the left palm to the right knee. You can walk those right fingertips right behind that right sitting bone. Make sure the chin's parallel with the mat. And as you inhale, just lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, gently twist around the axis of the spine. So we use the inhale to lengthen just using the exhale to twist. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist. The twists are really beneficial. We're massaging the organs. We're massaging the digestive system. If at any point the twists aggravate the low back or the upper back, take the twist out of the twist. Maybe just come about halfway. Take another inhale to find that length. Use the exhale to twist. Now on the next inhale, release the twist, come back through center, join those palms again, clasp the fingers, roll the wrist, shine the palms towards the ceiling. Just invite that space now between the armpits where we had our palms and the top of the pelvis. Take a nice in-breath into that space you've created. Use the exhale to unclasp the hands, take the twist to the left, land the right palm to the left knee, park those left fingertips right behind that left sitting bone. Make sure the chin's parallel. And as you inhale, lengthen through the spine, exhale to twist. Inhale to find that length, exhale to twist. Inhale to lengthen, creating space between each vertebrae, exhale to twist. Take another full round in the twist, just working to massage those internal organs, that digestive system. And when you next have an inhale, release the twist, come back through center, this time just join the palms. As you exhale, just draw the hands down the midline, bring the knuckles of the thumbs to rest on the sternum. If you'd like to set an intention for your practice, maybe close the eyes for two rounds of breath. And once your intention's been set, if you did set an intention, just let the eyes float back open again. Land the gaze on a single point on the ground or the mat in front of you. Release the palms away from prayer. We're going to come back, or we're going to come onto hands and knees rather for cat cow. So if you were sitting up on a prop, just slide it off to the side. If it's a block, bring that block up to the front corner of the mat. And even if you only have one block, that's fine. I can show you a couple of variations. Now you can pad underneath the knees if the knees are sensitive or if you have any injuries to the knees. We're going to start off in a tabletop. So we want the shoulders right over those wrists. And the wrist crease of both hands is in line with the front edge of the mat. The fingertip of that middle finger on both hands points right towards the front edge of the mat. And then spread the fingers a little wider. Now, if this is too intense in the wrists at any point through the practice, we can come onto forearms or just press back into a child's pose where we press the seat to the heels, the belly to the thighs, the forehead to the mat. That pose is available to you at any point through your practice. 
Now from the tabletop, you want the knees to be hips distance and the tops of the feet press softly into the mat. Now hide the heels behind the thighs so we're not rolling the ankles inwards or outwards. We want to just start to bring the alignment of the body into play here. Now on the inhale, tuck the toes, lift the gaze, arch the spine, drop the belly towards the mat for your cow pose. As you exhale, untuck the toes, press through the palms, draw the navel up and in, round the thoracic spine for cat. On the inhale, tuck the toes, lift the gaze, ride the breath forward for your cow. And as you exhale, untuck the toes, press through the palms, draw the navel up and in, round the thoracic spine. Inhale, come forward, let those toes tuck, let the gaze lift, shine your collarbones towards whatever happens to be in front of you, exhale to run. Now as we move through our cat-cow, we just want to start to connect each breath with each movement. And by doing so, we're just going to start to set the tempo for the practice. It'll help us avoid wanting just to rush in and out of the poses. Now we move through cat-cow at the beginning of the practice because it's a nice way to warm the spine. We're taking the spine through flexion and extension. And then just take another inhale, come forward, let those toes tuck, lift the gaze. Now as you exhale, just return through that neutral spine, untuck the toes. So we're right back on our tabletop. On the inhale, extend the right leg long behind you. Softly tap the toes of that right foot onto the mat. Start to engage through that right leg. You can press that right heel towards the wall behind you. Draw your navel up and in towards the low spine, and then reach the crown of the head towards whatever happens to be in front of you. Now on the inhale, hover those right toes a couple inches off the mat. Keep the toes pointing towards the ground. Really flex through the sole of that right foot. Keep that belly engaged. That right palm stays right under that right shoulder. Inhale, float your left arm out in front of you. Roll the wrist, turn the palm to face in towards the center line. Take an inhale here through this extension. As you exhale, scoop the belly in round. Bring that left elbow to the right knee. As you inhale, reach. As you exhale, round. Inhale, reach. Exhale, to round. Take another inhale, find the reach, hold the pose. Now find a little more space in the back of the neck. That'll help bring the gaze just to a single point on the mat below the tip of the nose here. Keep the belly engaged, keep reaching, keep pressing through the sole of that right foot. We'll take another inhale here. As we exhale, lower that left palm, tap that right, that right knee back so it's in line with the left knee. On the inhale, tuck the toes, lift the gaze, find your cow. As you exhale, untuck the toes, press through the palms, draw the navel up and in, rounding back through cat. Inhale, tuck the toes, lift the gaze, ride the breath forward. And as you exhale, find that rounding as you untuck the toes, press down through the tops of the feet, draw the navel up and in. Inhale, just come back through that neutral spine. Taking those shoulders right over those wrists, inhale, extend the left leg long onto the mat. Let the toes land and then start to engage through the back of that left leg. That left heel wants to press towards that wall behind you. The crown of the head wants to move towards the wall in front of you. Draw the navel up and in to protect the low back here. And then on the inhale, float those left toes a couple inches off the mat. Flex through the sole of that left foot as if you could stand on that wall behind you. You wanna keep the hips even here. So if you're hiking that left heel up, just lower it down. Keeping the hips nice and even. That left palm is going to stay right where it is. On the inhale, we're going to take the right arm out in front of us. We're going to spin the wrist so that palm faces the center line here. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, scoop the belly and round right elbow to that left knee. As you inhale, find that reach. As you exhale, round. Inhale to find that reach. Exhale around. Now as we move through the vinyasa, just imagine we're moving through water. Just once again, working to connect each breath with each movement. Now use the next inhale, find that reach. Hold the pose here. Keep that navel drawing up and in. Keep the back of the neck spacious. That gaze just lands softly on a single point below the tip of the nose. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower the right palm. Tap the left knee onto the mat. Take the knees a little wider than the hips. Bring those big toes to touch. 
Press the seat back onto the heels for child's pose. Let the belly rest on the thighs, and then bring the forehead onto the mat. If the forehead doesn't make it to the mat, you can cross the forearms, make a pillow with those palms, and just rest the forehead on that top hand. Take three nice deep belly breaths here, just starting to feel the connection between the breath and the body. And when you next happen to exhale, just take the arms out in front of you again, palms face down. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, pass through all fours, take a pause, narrow those knees so they're hips distance. Then walk your palms a palms distance, tuck the toes, press the hips up and back, downward facing dog. We're turning the body into the shape of an inverted V here. You might need to scoot the feet back a little bit and then just play with bending the knees here. Now with the knees bent, we can allow the palms to start to press the mat away from the armpits. We'll find a little more length in the spine. And don't worry if the heels don't land on the mat. By forcing the heels to the mat, we're just gonna make those hamstrings angry. If you have the range, then just play with a different kind of setup here. Because by pressing the heels to the earth, the pelvis is just gonna shift forward in space. We wanna continue with that length of the spine. And then we can pedal the feet out, maybe shift the hips from side to side. Just play with some fluid movement here. Maybe nod the head yes, maybe shake the head no. Now take an inhale, look between your hands, soften those knees even more. As you exhale, walk the feet up to meet the hands. If you had padding on the mat, you can just leave it right where it is. Start with those feet about hips distance. You can measure the distance by placing a fist between the balls of both feet here. And then let the belly soften onto the thighs. Let the neck be soft, let the head just hang carefully in space here. Draw the navel up and in, catch opposite elbows, and just start to sway side to side in your rag doll. Just allowing the weight of the head and the arms to control this movement from side to side. And then maybe play with nodding the head yes. Maybe shake the head no. And then find stillness in your rag doll. Release the elbows, let the fingertips lightly graze the mat here. Find a nice connection between the feet. Ground down through the feet as you inhale, just slowly start to roll up to stand. So we're articulating through the spine. Keep the navel drawing up and in. If this is too intense in the low back, bring the hands to the thighs. Come up through a flat back. But the key is to keep that navel drawing up and in. So we'll all meet at the top of our mat in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Keeping those feet about hips distance. Just stand up nice and tall here. Take the arms either side of you, and then just gently roll the wrists so the palms start to face out in front of you. Now option to close the eyes here, and just let the awareness come to the feet here. Feel the four corners of both feet connecting, anchoring you into the standing pose. If it feels like you're rolling towards the heels and a little wobbly, or if you're rolling towards the balls of the feet, see if you can find that sweet spot right in the middle and then just lift all 10 toes off the mat. Soften the toes back onto the mat. Try to avoid gripping through the toes. Now on the inhale, take the arms out, around, and up. Join the palms. As you exhale, take the hands to heart. If you don't have the room in your space to take the arms around and up, you can take them right through the center line, just using the inhale to take the arms overhead. And then we're using the exhale to take the hands to heart. We'll take one more like that. Really feel the feet connected to the earth as you reach through those fingertips. And as you exhale, like a magnet, you're drawing the knuckles of the thumbs right down that midline to the heart center. Tadasana Mountain Pose. We'll start to build from here. As we inhale, take the arms overhead. Now on the exhale, take a dive here, forward fold. Bend those knees as much as you need to. Now on the inhale, lengthen the spine, bring the hands to the shins, crown of the head reaches, and on the exhale, you're gonna soften through a forward fold. As you ground down, inhale, root to rise, take the arms overhead. As you exhale, take the hands to heart. Just keep moving like this on the breath. Inhale, take the arms overhead. 
Now as you exhale, take that dive. If the low back is an issue, just come into half a dive. Just tilt the pelvis forward, bring the hands to the shins. If we can forward fold, then do so. Ground down, inhale, lengthen through the spine, hands to shins, crown reaches. Exhale, soften through that forward fold. Now ground down, inhale, root to rise, take the arms overhead. This is Urdhva Hastasana. And as we exhale, we take the hands down the midline, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, take the arms overhead, let those feet anchor, let those arms reach. Exhale, take that dive, forward fold, ride the breath. Inhale, half lift to lengthen. Exhale, soften to fold. Now ground down, inhale, root to rise, take the arms overhead. And on the exhale, take the hands down the midline, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take one more round on your own, on your own breath call. I'm gonna show the modification if you had low back issues. We'll all meet back in Tadasana Mountain Pose, standing tall at the top of the mat, hands to heart. Shoulders softening away from the ears, four corners of the feet connecting you to the earth. On the inhale, take the arms overhead. As you exhale, take a dive, forward fold, just ride the breath. As you inhale, half lift to lengthen. As you exhale, soften, fold, palms to the mat. Just walk back into a plank pose. So we're just stepping the feet back towards the bottom edge of the mat, coming into the top of a push-up. If this is too much in the wrist, we can drop the knees to the mat. But once you're in plank, start to activate through the glutes, the thighs, and the abdominal. With the activation, take an inhale here. As you exhale, lower the knees to the mat, untuck the toes, rest the tops of the feet on the mat. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, bend the elbows, lower the upper body down onto the mat in one straight line. Work to keep the elbows hugging to the side ribs here. Feel those fingertips in line with the breastbone so those elbows are pointing directly towards your heels. Tops of the feet stay on the mat. On the inhale, lift the chest, chin, forehead for baby cobra. And as you exhale, soften right back down, chest, chin, forehead to the mat. Two more on the breath. Inhale, floats the chest, chin, forehead. As you exhale, soften down. Take another inhale, just float that chest, chin, forehead. And as you exhale, lower everything back onto the mat. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, press through the palms, tuck the toes, come back through all fours, and then send those hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now on the inhale, look between the hands, soften those knees, exhale, walk those feet up to meet the hands again. If jumping is part of your practice and jump, inhale, we'll all lengthen through the spine to prepare. Exhale, soften to fold. Now ground down, inhale, root to rise, take the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart, Dasana Mountain Pose. On the breath, inhale, take the arms overhead. As we exhale, take that dive, forward fold, Uttanasana. As we inhale, half lift to lengthen. As we exhale, soften to fold, palms to the mat. Step those feet back to that plank pose. Always an option to come to down dog. But we'll all meet in our plank pose. Finding the engagement in the legs, the glutes, and the abdominals. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, lower the knees to the mat. This is the modified version. Untuck the toes. As you exhale, bend the elbows, lead with the sternum, lower down in one straight line. Inhale, lift the chest, chin, forehead for baby cobra. On the exhale, tuck the toes, press the palms, send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. If chaturanga full expression is part of your expression, then just, or part of your practice, then just move through your practice. On the inhale, look between the hands, soften those knees, either walk, hop, skip. When the feet arrive, find that length in the spine as the hands come to the shins. As you exhale, soften through that forward fold. Now ground down, inhale, root to rise, take the arms overhead. On the exhale, take the hands down the midline to the of the mountain. Adding on, inhale, take the arms overhead. As you exhale, take that dive, forward fold, ride the breath. 
On the inhale, half lift, lengthen. On the exhale, soft and full. Bring the palms to the mat. Step the left foot back behind you, coming into a low lunge here. Ground down through the ball of that left foot. Bring the palms to frame that right foot. On the inhale, step the right foot back to meet the left. So we're coming right into that plank pose. We'll take an inhale here. As you exhale, either move through the vinyasa with the modification or lower down halfway to chaturanga. And then inhale, roll onto the tops of the feet for upward facing dog. Make sure those shoulders are over those wrists. Wherever we are on the exhale, we're all going to meet in downward facing dog. Let those palms softly press the earth away. Let those sitting bones reach towards the ceiling, backs of the legs working to press towards that wall behind you. Now on the next inhale, take that left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Just start by reaching to the heel of that left foot. Make sure the toes are pointing towards the ground. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, scoop the belly, step the left foot in between the hands. Option to drop the right knee and walk that left foot forward. Untuck the right toes, bring the top of that right foot onto the mat. We want that left knee over that left ankle. If the left knee is still lifted, bring the right knee onto the mat here. Take the palms to that left knee. Just bring the torso upright. And then start to ground through the sole of that left foot. Let the top of that right foot softly press into the earth here. Now on the inhale, take the arms to frame the ears, coming into crescent lunge. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Keep the navel drawing up and in. And just see if the inner thighs of both legs, you just start to find an activation like they get scissor towards one another. Keep that activation. Inhale, open the arms to cactus arms. As you exhale, reach through those fingertips. Moving on the breath. Inhale to open. Exhale to reach. If this aggravates the shoulders, then don't open all the way. Just find your range. Really use the exhale to reach those arms out. Take another inhale to open. Use the exhale to reach. Keep the arms extended. On the inhale, just take the hands to the heart and just take a little twist to the right here. Bring that right elbow on top of that left knee. We just want to work to press that, that knee away from us so we're not collapsing here. Really press through those palms. Just invite an opening across the upper chest here. And we can stay here breathing in the twist or it's part of your practice to tuck the right toes and float that right knee off the mat and do so. Really keep the legs engaged here. Keep those palms pressing firmly. And just making sure that left knee stays right over that left ankle. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, just lower the right knee onto the mat. Bring the feet, or the, sorry, the palms to frame the left foot. Tuck the left toes and just lift the right knee off the mat. We're in that low lunge again. Come up on the fingertips, maybe blocks. We just want to work to start to find length from the crown of the head all the way to the heel of that right foot. Take an inhale here. Take another exhale here. If we're on the block, scoot the blocks off to the side. On the next inhale, step the right foot to join the left. Find that length in the spine to prepare. As you exhale, soften through that forward fold. Ground down, inhale, root to rise. Take the arms overhead. And as you exhale, take the hands to the heart. We'll take the other side. Inhale, take the arms overhead. As you exhale, take that dive forward, fold, Uttanasana. Now, as we inhale, half lift to lengthen. As we exhale, soften, fold, palms to the mat. Step the right foot back this time. Come into that low lunge. We're only going to be here for a breath or two. And then ground down to the ball of that right foot. Let the palms connect to the earth. Inhale, step the left foot back to meet the right, coming right into that plank pose. Finding those muscle groups engaged, take the inhale here. As you exhale, lower through your vinyasa. Inhale for baby cobra, maybe upward facing dog. As we exhale, tuck the toes, send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now on the next inhale, take the right leg up and back. Start with that three-legged dog on this side now, so that heel's reaching towards the wall behind you. Those toes are pointing towards the ground. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, scoop the belly, softly step the right foot in between the hands. You can bring the left knee down. We're all going to meet there anyways. Now just walk that front foot so that right knee is right over that right ankle. Untuck those left toes. Press the top of that left foot into the mat. Take the palms to that right knee or right thigh this time. 
bringing the torso up. The same deal, let those legs really work to create that engagement where those inner thighs can just scissor towards one another. Now as you ground down through the sole of that right foot, inhale, float the arms to frame the ears here. So we've got the legs working with that activation. We've got the navel drawing up and in. Soften the shoulders away from those earlobes. Maybe you have a little bit of a smile come across the lips here. As we inhale, we're going to open to those cactus arms. As we exhale, we're going to reach forward in space. Moving as if we're in water. Inhale to open. Exhale to reach. Use that inhale to open. Use the exhale to reach. We'll take one more like that. Inhale to open. Exhale to reach. Just stay here in the pose, keeping those shoulders soft. On the end, next inhale, take the hands to the heart. As we exhale, we're going to twist to the right this time. Bring the left elbow on top of that right knee. And hopefully you don't fall over like me. And you can prevent that by engaging through those legs. And then press through those palms. Really activate, open up through the upper front body here. And we can stay here. We can tuck the left toes and float that left knee off the mat like I demonstrated on the other side. This side, I don't think is going to allow me to do it for some. Breathing into the twist, once again, we come into these twists in our practice to help massage the organs and the digestive system. If that knee is lifted off the mat, take an inhale here, exhale, lower the left knee onto the mat, untuck the toes. To come out of the twist, ground down through the front of that right, the sole of that right foot. Inhale, come back through center. Take those arms to frame the ears here. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, bring the hands back onto the mat. Maybe we come onto those blocks. And then tuck the left toes, lift that left knee off the mat. We'll all meet in a low lunge here. We want to keep that right knee over that right ankle. The back of that left leg just works to be really engaged here. And even if you're on those blocks, it's okay to come onto fingertips. You want to just take the front body off that front thigh. And then scoop the blocks off to the side. We can keep the hands on the fingertips. Just inhale, step the left foot to join the right. Lengthen through the spine to prepare. As you exhale, soften through that pull. Now ground down, inhale, root to rise. Take the arms overhead. And as you exhale, take the hands down the midline. Heart center. Tadasana Mountain. Just arrive in the pose here. Option to close the eyes and just check in with the body. And if we're working with the eyes closed, just take a moment to scan your body. Start that scan at the crown of the head. And work your way down to the soles of the feet. Just working to release any tension, any gripping that might be occurring anywhere in the body. Could be the jaw, be the neck, to be the shoulders, to be the low back, to be the thighs, to be the soles of the feet. Send awareness to any part of the body where that might be occurring. And keep the eyes closed, release the prayer, just float the arms back alongside you. Find that space between the ears and the shoulders. And then whenever you're ready, just softly start to open the eyes, land the gaze on a single point. And then just let the eyelids flutter open a little wider, bring the room back in here. Now we'll come to stand in the middle of the mat here. So if you still have padding on the mat, just screw it off to the side. Walk your feet about, well, about a leg's distance apart. I'm just gonna readjust my screen so it's not cutting off the top of my head. Bring your hands to your hips. Just check in, see what's happening with the pelvis here. If you find that you're kind of pouring forward, sticking the butt out, or if you're tilting back, overemphasizing the curve of that tailbone, just bring the pelvis to a nice neutral position. You can just envision a bowl of water been placed in the pelvic bowl and you're just working to keep that contents in place. Pivot on that left heel, turn those left toes to face your left side wall here. And then look down at your feet, draw a line from that left heel to that right middle arch. And you might need to scoot that back foot back because as we bend through that left knee for warrior two, we want to bring that left knee right over that left ankle. 
We also want that knee to fall right in line with the second and third toe of that left foot. So we want to avoid that knee pulling towards the center line or moving away towards the center line. And then just like we did earlier, let the soles of the feet take root. Let those legs start to find that activation again. And with soft shoulders, inhale, just take the arms out into a T. The palms will start by facing down. Warrior two here. Now, if your stance is too narrow and that knee is not quite going over that ankle, then just step that back foot back a little bit. You don't want that left knee traveling past that ankle either. Clean line, knee to ankle. And then just turn the head to look across the left shoulder. And on the inhale, roll the wrist, turn the palms to face the ceiling. See if the shoulders can soften a little bit. By doing so, we're inviting space across the upper chest. Now on the inhale, straighten through that left leg. Take both arms overhead, maybe the fingertips touch. As we exhale, just float the arms back into those warrior two arms. The palms can stay facing up. Inhale to straighten, reach those arms as we exhale to float. Inhale to straighten, reach those arms. Exhale, just float the arms back to those warrior two arms. Now just spin the palms, the wrists, so the palms face down here. Keep the legs right where they are. Start to reach those left fingertips forward in space. Bring that left forearm onto your left thigh. Bring the right hand to the hip. Just create the connection between that left thigh and that left forearm but avoid collapsing the left side body weight here. Keep the core and the legs engaged. So if you did have to float that left forearm, you could. You have the option here to bring the left hand to the inside of that left ankle or a block, depending on your range. Right hand to the hip, just start to spin the barrel of the chest towards your device, stacking the right side rib cage on top of the left. And as the feet work to ground, use the inhale, just take that right arm around up and let it start to reach in front of you for extended side angle. And we just want to avoid collapsing onto that left forearm. And then just bring your awareness to the edge of that right foot. See if the whole sole of that foot can anchor. And then just draw a line of energy up the right side of the body through those right fingertips. There should be space between that right forearm or that right bicep rather and the right ear. And we're going to start to move that right arm like a windmill. Moving as if we're in water here. Just moving in a 360 degree rotation. Just starting to get the synovial fluids in that shoulder joint moving. Just creating ease of movement. And the next time the inhale brings the right arm overhead, just pause. And on the next exhale, we'll take that right arm in the opposite direction. Moving like that windmill. Moving as if we're in water. And then just use the next inhale to take the right arm overhead. Find the full expression of the pose. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, straighten through that left leg. Come back through center. Bring the hands to the hips. Now, we want to avoid locking that left knee joint. So just you can work with a micro band. And if you're hyper, if you're super flexible, avoid that knee kind of coming in towards the center line, towards the mat here. You should just have that nice line. Toe heel that back foot in a couple inches. And we can turn those toes at a 45 degree angle for our triangle pose. So the right hand stays to the hip. Reach those left fingertips out in front of you again. But this time, move the upper torso forward in space. See if you can pull that right hip point back in space. Now you'll feel the engagement in the back of that left leg. And take an inhale here. As you exhale, come forward. Bringing the back of that left hand to the inside of that left knee, that left inner calf of that left ankle. If the hand can come to a block, great. And then just spin the barrel of the chest towards this device. Float those right fingertips towards the ceiling. Now I work with a slight bend in the knee because it's easier for me. I can also play with range where I'm just kind of like not kind of coming as far forward. And you can play with it. Just imagine those right fingertips to get a little lighter. But just working to keep the crown of the head in line with the base of the spine. Keep the navel drawing up and in. Firm belly. Legs are active. If coming into a half bind is part of your practice, you can lower the right arm down around behind you. Hook the fingertips to the inside of that left hip crease. Maybe spin the barrel of the chest slightly more open, but just avoid throwing the head back. 
Keep that line from crown to tailbone. If we're in the bind, release the bind. Start to press through the sole of that left foot. Take an inhale here. Exhale, come back through center. Hands to the hips. Pivot on that left heel. Turn those left toes to face your device. And keeping the hands on the hips. Find an inhale to lengthen through the spine. As you exhale, just tilt the body forward in space. A couple of options. If you have that block, you can bring the block just under the chin. Maybe come onto the fingertips or onto palms. If you have the ability to come to the ground, great. We just want to avoid collapsing here. Working to keep the integrity of the spine so we're not collapsing in the low back. We're not super rounding in the upper back. And then just soften the toes, because in this pose, it's very easy to grip the toes, because we think it'll prevent us from coming farther forward. Just establish the body weight balancing between the balls of the feet and the heels here. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, bend the knees, hands to the hips, belly's engaged, come up through a flat back, come up slow. And then we're gonna pivot on that right heel. We're gonna turn those right toes to face the right side wall. Keeping the pelvis neutral, maybe scoot that back foot back as you bend through that right knee. Make sure you can draw that line from that right heel to that left middle arch. And then the right knee stacks over that right ankle in line with the second and third toe of the right foot. Let the feet ground as if they could root. Legs find that engagement. Shoulders soften, inhale, just float the arms out into those warrior two arms. We're working to keep the ears over the shoulders and the shoulders right over that hip structure. You just turn the gaze across that right middle finger. When you next inhale, just roll the wrist, turn the palms to face the ceiling. See if the shoulders can soften even more away from the ears, opening up through the collar, broadening the collarbone. Drive. Now on the inhale, straighten that right leg, draw all those palms towards one another. As we exhale, we're just going to float the arms back through our warrior two. Use the inhale, straighten, reach those arms. Exhale to float. Inhale to straighten, reach those arms. Exhale to float. Now roll the wrist, turn both palms to face down. Keep the legs super engaged. Start to reach those right fingertips a little farther away from you. Right forearm's gonna come to that right thigh. The left hand will come to the hip this time. Establish that connection, that relationship between that right thigh and that right forearm without completely collapsing the right side body weight onto that forearm. Engaging the core and the legs will help us. So if you did have to float that right forearm off, you could. With that connection established, inhale, just take the left arm up over and out in front of you for extended side angle. Have the palm facing down, space between that left ear and that left bicep. And then bring your awareness to the left foot. Find the outer edge of that left foot, carefully grounding you here. And then maybe draw that line of energy from the, all the way up the left side through those left fingertips. And we'll start moving that left arm in that circular rotation. Moving like a windmill. But moving as if we're in water. Just getting the synovial fluids in the shoulder joint on the left side, moving, creating ease of movement. Now the next inhale, we'll take that left arm overhead. Take a gentle pause here, hold the pose. And then when you next have an exhale, we'll take that left arm in the opposite direction. Still moving like that windmill, still moving as if you're in water. Just avoiding any temptation to rush. And then just use that next inhale, take the left arm overhead, find the full expression of the pose. You inhale here. As you exhale, press the earth away from the sole of that right foot, straighten through that right leg. Bring the hands to the hips. And then scoop that back foot in a couple inches for triangle other side. We can turn the toes at a 45 degree angle. Avoid locking that right knee again. Maybe play with a micro bend. Now the left hand will stay on the hip. Reach those right fingertips out in front of you again. Now start to move the upper torso forward in space. See if that left hip point can pull back in space softly. Feel the engagement in the back of that right leg here. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, just hinge at the hips, come forward. Roll the wrist, bring the back of that right hand to the inside of that right knee, inner calf, inner ankle. Left hand to the hips, spin the barrel to chest. And we can take the left arm in the air. If you work with a block on the other side, work with the block on this side. 
If it helps to keep that right knee bent, great. Really work with your body. And maybe just play with maybe just hovering the torso a little farther away from that right thigh by making those left fingertips get a little lighter. And if that half bind is part of your practice, carefully lower the left arm down around behind you. Hook the fingertips to the inside of that right hip crease. Maybe start to open up through the upper chest a little more. Avoid throwing the head back. Keep the crown of the head in line with the base of the spine. That belly's engaged to protect the low back. We're in the bind on the next exhale. Just release it. Float those fingertips towards the ceiling. Ground down to the sole of that right foot. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, press the earth away. Come back through center, hands to the hips. Pivot on that right heel, turn those toes to face your device. And just walk the feet together. Pedal it up, shake the arms, just make any kind of movements. I find that doing these nice little rotations helps to neutralize the spine. And then we're going to make our way onto the mat. A couple of options. You can start in Tadasana and you can move through a full vinyasa. You can come down through a squat, maybe hold a squat for a couple rounds of breath. Or we can just turn and bring the bum onto the mat. Just arriving when it suits you. We'll all meet on our backs here. So if you have a block, keep a block handy. As you lower the upper body onto the mat, Keep the knees bent. Make sure the feet are hips distance apart here. Now your gaze should just be towards the ceiling. You want to avoid looking over to the side just to protect the neck here. Now the feet are hips distance. Those heels should be right in line with your sitting bones. And you can check the distance by walking the heels towards the bum. And then just take the pointer finger of both fingers. Just tap the back of the heels here. If you like working with a block between the knees, then just place a block between the knees. Start to engage the inner thigh muscles here. Now the arms are alongside you, the palms are facing down. Start to press through the forearms and the palms. Let the four corners of the feet ground. Use the inhale, lift the hips off the mat, making the front of the pelvis towards the ceiling, coming into our bridge pose. If you have the block, keep it right where it is. If you don't have a block, Imagine there's a block there and you're really engaging those inner thigh muscles. We just want to keep those knees right in line with the hips. Avoid rolling out to the outer edges of the feet or rolling in towards the inner arches. We'll take an inhale here. As we exhale, lower the back of the pelvis onto the mat using the entire exhale. Now the feet, the arms stay right where they are. We're going to come into a second round. Press through the feet, inhale, lift the hips. Find your range. And then we can clasp the hands at the low back and just scoop those shoulder blades towards one another. This will let the upper chest open again, the heart center. Make sure there's space between the chin and the upper chest so you're not tucking the chin towards the chest. Be mindful of the neck in this pose. And then we can softly press through the backs of the upper arms. Move the thoracic spine a little deeper into the thoracic cavity, opening up the front body. If any of this is too intense in the neck, the shoulders, the wrists, the elbows, the low back, release. That will be here for two more full rounds of breath. And then when you next have an exhale, unclasp those hands, roll the shoulder blades away from one another, lower the hips down one vertebrae at a time. Now, if we had the block, take the block out from between the knees. I'm going to offer up a couple different options here. We can come back into bridge. We can scoot that, we can slide the block rather underneath the sacrum, come into a restorative bridge. If wheel is part of your practice, Urdhva Dhanurasana, then you can set up for wheel, but just make sure that you're well versed in wheel because I'm not going to demo it for you. So if it's part of your practice and you're comfortable coming into it, then by all means, feel welcome to. Now, if you're in restorative bridge with that sacrum supported by that block, just make sure it's not creeping into the curve of the lumbar spine. And start to allow the weight of the pelvic structure to soften and settle onto that block. Check in with the low back here. 
If the low back and the sacrum are happy with this equation, you can extend the legs long, just inviting and opening the length of the front body. If you don't have a block and you don't have a cushion that's firm enough to support you, then maybe just come back through another round of bridge. If you're working with the block and the legs extended, just take the arms out into a T. See if you can let the wingspan start to dissolve into the ground. If you're in wheel, start to make your way out of your wheel by pressing through the palms and the feet evenly, lifting, tucking the chin towards the chest. And if you need to come onto the head as you come out of it, make sure it's the back round of the skull, not the crown of the head. And if you're coming out of wheel, maybe find a happy baby. If you're on the block with the legs extended, just start to bend the knees, walk the feet back onto the mat. If you're in bridge, as you next exhale, unclasp the hands, roll the shoulder blades away from one another, lower everything onto the mat here. Now, if we're still on the block, option to lift the feet in the air, coming into a supported inversion. Now, if blood pressure or glaucoma or any kind of dental procedure is recent, which has probably not happened, then maybe avoid taking the feet up over the heart center. If you don't have a block, you can just lift the legs in the air, letting the sacrum, the back of the pelvis support you. You can even come to a wall and send the legs up the wall. If shoulder stand is part of your practice and you practice it regularly, you can come into shoulder stand. Any neck issues, any shoulder injuries, I would say find the modified version of shoulder stand, which is basically what we're doing on the block with the legs extended. And if you rearrange the arms, let those arms just fall back out into that T so the wingspan can just start to dissolve. Three rounds of breath here, but working to keep that space between the chin and the upper chest. Just maintaining the curve, the natural curve of the cervical spine, the neck. And then whichever expression of this pose we're in, just start to work your way out of it. If the legs are extended, really firm through the belly, and then just start to bend the knees in towards the chest. Take the heels parallel with the ground, and then just lower the sole of one foot at a time here. If you're in shoulder stand, make your way into plow pose. Be mindful of the back of the neck and the shoulders. If we're on the block, press through the feet. On the inhale, lift the hips off that block. Scoot the block off to the side. If we're at the wall, maybe just let the legs come down through goddess by taking the knees out to the side, bringing the soles of the feet towards one another. Now, if you're against the wall, just stay in goddess. If you're on the back without the block, just join the soles of the feet. Let those knees just fall out to the side like butterfly wings. Option to place blocks underneath the thighs. We'll come into a supported goddess pose here. If you're coming out of plow after shoulder stand and you know fish pose, find your way into fish pose. Just to neutralize the cervical spine. Whichever pose we're in, just start to tune into the breath like we did at the beginning of the practice. See if the breath is moving at a slightly more rapid tempo than you're comfortable with. You can work by lengthening the inhales. You can work to lengthen the exhales. If the breath has gone shallow, just try that option of lengthening those inhales. Now, if we're in the goddess pose, take the hands to the outsides of the thighs and the knees, draw those knees towards one another like a book, Scoot those blocks off to the side. We're in fish, come out of fish with the knees bent. Bring the feet onto the mat, walk the feet so they're mat width, so the pinky toe side of the feet line up with the edges of the mat. Let the knees knock together in the center line. And then just start to windshield wipe with the knees from side to side. Just massaging the low back.
And the next time the knees go over to the right side, just let the knees fall into a twist here. You can work to stack that left knee on top of the right. Maybe we prop underneath that right knee or that right thigh. Check in with the low back. And then take the arms out into a T here. See where that left shoulder blade is in relationship to the mat. If it's hovering off the mat, then just place a prop, either a block or a book or a cushion. It creates space in the upper back body so that left shoulder blade can land and be supported by the mat. And then just keep the gaze towards the ceiling to protect the neck. And just notice the space you've created in the left side of your body here. Just see if the next few rounds of inhale can work to expand into that space between that left armpit and that left hip point. So just allow the inhales to expand into that space you've created. As you exhale, let the left side body soften. Just keep the jaw relaxed, keep the brow nice and soft. Take an inhale of your twist here. As you exhale, carefully release the twist. Come back through center. Walk those feet mat width. Join the knees in the center line. Just rock those knees side to side. If you had a prop supporting the right knee or right thigh, then just bring it over to the left side. We'll use it on the other side. And the next time those knees happen to go over to the left side, find your twist. Bring the right knee on top of the left knee. Support it if you need to. Take the right, take the, uh, both arms out into a T here. And if you feel any tension in the low back, you can move those knees a little farther away from that left armpit. Now, where is that right shoulder blade in relationship to the mat? If it's floating off the mat, prop that left knee, that left thigh, allow the upper back body to rest evenly on the mat. The arms can fall back out into that T. Palms are facing up. Now we've opened up the right side body by taking the twist to the left here. Just allow the breath to explore the right side body here. Just using the inhale to expand into that space between that right armpit, that right hip point. So with each inhale, we're working to expand the space in the right side body. And as we exhale, we're allowing the right side body to soften while we stay in the twist here. Maybe just envision the breath just massaging the internal organs, massaging the digestive system. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, release the twist. Carefully come back through center and bring the feet back onto the mat. So those mat, the feet are now hips distance. Hug the knees into the chest. Just give yourself a gentle rock on the spine. Just rocking from side to side. Maybe start to make circles in the knees. Just starting to massage the length of the spine, the muscles along the spine, the sacrum. Take those circles in the opposite direction. And then bring the knees to stillness. Just slide the palms behind the backs of the legs, the thighs. And just start to rock on the spine forwards and backwards. If this is not going down very well in the low back, then just roll to one side and just press. We're all going to meet in a seated position. So we'll take a seated forward fold here. So if you have a blanket, it's just nice to find a little bit of a lift for this, not a lift, a support for the sitting bones, just like we did seated earlier. And if you have a strap, that strap handy. Extend the legs long in front of you. Walk the fingertips behind you here. As you press the earth away, just lengthen through the spine, but drop the shoulders away from the ears. It might seem counterintuitive. We just want to lengthen the spine here in Dandasana staff pose, as opposed to just rounding through the shoulders and collapsing here. As we establish that length through the spine, let the sitting bones root. On the inhale, take the arms overhead. We're finding that space again between the armpits and the hips. And as you next have it, exhale, just forward fold here. Bring the hands to the shins. Maybe we stay right here. If you know that you can catch the toes, 
without causing grief in the hamstrings, then by all means do so. Find your range. If the hands are to the shins, or if you had a strap, take the straps around the balls of both feet. Hold your strap far enough back where the arms come to a 90 degree angle. We're gonna use the strap to leverage the pose, not to pull us farther into the pose to meet any kind of expectation of what we think we should look or feel like in this pose here. Maybe you just stay bolt upright like this. Maybe the knees bend ever so slightly, and as you inhale, you find length out of the pelvic bowl. As you exhale, you softly move the torso forward in space. Now checking with the low back. If the low back is angry or grumpy, then just come to bolt upright. Now if you know that you can come forward without collapsing through the spine, great. Keep that space in the low back. Envision you're wearing one of those weightlifting belts. And then soften the shoulders. If you're holding the strap, it's not as easy, but just let the shoulders float away from those earlobes. Now land the gaze on a point just below, or just at the tops of the feet, rather. Relax the jaw. Maybe lift the corners of the lips towards the ceiling. Maybe not. We'll all take an inhale here. Use the exhale, hinge at the hips, come back through that upright torso position where the chin's parallel with the ground. If you have the strap, scoop the strap off to the side. Walk the fingertips behind you again, another round of Dandasana. This time just bounce the knees, release through the backs of the legs here. And then join the soles of the feet towards one another. I'm going to reconfigure on the mat here so you can see how I set up. So we already played with goddess pose, so we started to find a release in the hip flexors. Building on that, just join the soles of the feet. We create a little bit of a bigger diamond between the heels and the groin. So in cobbler's pose, they would be much closer in. Just find a little more space by walking the feet away from you. And then just bring the fingertips behind the, the hip structure again. Same deal as we did in Dandas in the staff pose. So those fingertips can just press the earth away, the crown of the head can reach towards the ceiling, and the shoulders can drop away from the ears. Now keep the navel drawing up and in, protect the low back. Maybe we stay right here. Maybe we start to walk the hands one at a time, either side of the tops of the feet. If you're gonna come farther forward, use the inhale to find that length in the spine. And as you exhale, slowly hinge forward, checking with the groins, and the, hand, and the uh, hip flexors here. That's how you can go on too deep. And then just let the gaze float to a point on the tops of the feet. And just see if each breath can start to just create a little bit more space in the upper back body. Maybe imagine someone's placed a palm right at that area over the shoulder blades and you can breathe into that palm. Take an inhale here, and you exhale, come back through center, hinging at the hips. Take the hands to the outsides of those knees, close those knees like a book. Extend the legs long. Just gently bounce the knees to release the backs of the legs. And then we'll set up for the final pose for the practice, Shavasana, corpse pose. So if you have that blanket or a towel, just make a pillow. If you have a cushion to slide under the knees or if you have another blanket or another towel, then just roll it up. It's nice to get the knees a little bit of support when you extend the legs. If you like to put on socks or put on a sweatshirt, so we'll just make our way onto our backs. Now with the back of the head supported, and then just let the legs kind of just settle in here. So just let the heels support the weight of the legs. If you don't have padding under the knees, let those toes just fan out naturally. If you've got that padding under the knees, avoid pressing the backs of the knees into the padding. Just find the lightness here. This will just take a little bit of the work out of the low back. And then just let the arms fall alongside you. The palms should face up. 
And then just let the entire length of the arms from those shoulder blades start to soften into the mat. Let the back of the head be supported by the mat or by that blanket. So the nose, the chin, and the forehead are pointing towards the ceiling, just keeping that natural curve of the cervical spine. Close the eyes. And just soften the eyes a little deeper right into those eye sockets. Relax your jaw. Soften the tongue to the lower half of the mouth. And let the lips part ever so slightly. And then bring your awareness down to the tops of the feet. Just imagine the inhale starts at the tops of the feet and slowly draws up the length of the front body all the way to the jugular notch. And as you exhale, let the breath travel from that jugular notch down that pathway to the tops of the feet. Let the next inhale start at the tops of the feet, slowly draw up the front body. Top of the in-breath, right at that jugular notch. Exhale, retrace that pathway with the breath from jugular notch down to the tops of the feet. And obviously we know we can't breathe into our extremities, our lower extremities. It's just nice to envision moving the breath as energy. It'll help to slow the tempo of the breath. It will help to slow the tempo of the body ultimately slowing the tempo of the mind. Just knowing that the mat, the props, and the earth beneath you will support you in this final resting posture. Just let everything go. Just find stillness in the next few moments. to let your breath deepen. The next few rounds of inhales work to expand the upper back body into the mat beneath you. 
Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Gently rock the feet from side to side. Take a nice big inhale, reach the arms overhead. Just find a nice yawning stretch like it's the first stretch of your morning. Stretch long through whichever side of the body wants to stretch first. Could be left, could be right. Pick the side and really work to stretch from fingertips all the way to your toes. And then release the stretch on that side. Take the stretch long on the opposite side body, stretching from fingertips to toes. And then release the stretch, let the arms make their way back alongside the body. Hug the knees into the chest, roll onto your right side, coming into a fetal position. You can support the head with the right bicep or the top of the left hand. Stay here for a couple rounds of breath here. See if you can start to hold on to the state that you've worked to get to with your practice. And using the palm of the left hand, just start to press the ground away. The body will come upright. Keep the eyes closed. Gently tuck the chin to the chest as you come up. This will protect the neck as the weight of the head comes upright. And just come to find a comfortable seat. You can support the sitting bones again. You can sit on your shins, just. Or you can work to find length in the spine. Bring the palms to the knees. Take a moment here to acknowledge your practice. Take a moment to acknowledge and perhaps start to welcome and receive the residue of your practice. And just sitting up nice and tall, flip those palms off the knees, join the hands at the heart center, let the knuckles of the thumbs come to rest on the sternum. And then gently just start to lift the sternum towards the chin. And then bow the forehead towards the fingertips, keeping the back of the neck spacious. Just take a moment to thank yourselves for coming to your mat to do your practice today. And thank you for letting me guide you. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Once again, my name is Phil Schuster. I teach yoga at Manhattan Athletic Club in Midtown Manhattan. There'll be information in the uh, description for the class along with social links. But if you'd like to join me in class again, just keep an eye on this channel. In the meantime, stay safe, be well. If you have any questions about what we did in the practice, you can message me on Instagram. Uh, yoga is NYC. So hopefully I will see you all soon. Namaste, stay safe, be well. <laughs>